What's up everybody, it's Chris again from Broad Tip. Got another tutorial for you guys in Lightroom 4. I'm going to teach you how to rescue your photos. Um, apologize if my audio quality is a little different this time. I'm uh, using my on-computer microphones. So that's not ideal, but it's the only thing I have right now. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I have this picture I took in Birmingham, Alabama at Lynn Park. Um, it's a cool picture. I like the uh, the reflections in the water. You got some some moss and some leaves. Got some nice kind of fallish colors in the trees. The sky is blown out. The building is really low contrast, and uh, it's not perfect, but it is salvageable. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, let's open this up. We're gonna crop it. Um, I do like these leaves down here and stuff, but it doesn't really add anything to the photo. It kind of takes your attention away from the uh, reflection. So let's crop most of those leaves out. Now, this is pretty much in the center the building is, but I'm going to crop just a little bit off of this side. Pull that right into the center. And what I'm watching is this pool of water right here. And I want to try to get this as much in the center and this as much in the center as I can. And that's about as good as I'm going to get it, just compromising as much as I can, or as little as I can here. Um, I might move this down a bit, try to get some of the sky out of the photo. It doesn't do a whole lot for me. It's going to bring some of those leaves back in, which I, I think I like. Let's see how that looks. Alright, I can handle that. Alright, so next step is going to be to come over here, and I see that the overall picture is just overexposed. So I'm just going to look at it, see what I can do with the exposure here. And then watch if I pull all the way down, you start to get some of that, that quality back in the sky. But I'm, I'm just going to reset that. Just, you know, I know what I'm going for now. Alright, so I'm going to come to my highlights, and I'm going to kill them. And that's going to bring the picture back in the sky. It's still going to be really low contrast, but it's, it's getting some of the... Uh, the detail back and the shadows I'm gonna raise these up not too much I don't wanna blow this blow the shadows out too much but I am gonna hold alt I'm gonna click on my whites and I'm gonna pull this up until I start to see a couple of pixels you really don't want to overdo this it's gonna screw up your picture so I'm gonna get it down so just when I see the pic the pixels start to go away and I'm gonna let off and that's gonna be about it I'm going to do the same thing to the blacks, but in the opposite direction. You see I already have a good bit of uh, blacks that are completely burnt out. So I'm not going to do a whole lot there. Alright, so I have my quality back. So now let's go back up here to the exposure and we're going to knock it down a little. Not too much. It's, it doesn't need a whole lot. Now I'm going to mess with the contrast too, and that's going to make it seem a little darker. Okay. Maybe a little more. I'm okay with that. Now let's come back here and let's bring it up a bit. I'll probably end up putting it back later. Alright, so what I see now is that one, I'm, I can't really tell you what I my camera auto focused on. I think it was the fountain. But I'm getting a little bit of blurriness here. So I'm just going to go straight down here to detail. And I'm going to come up here to these trees and get right up here on top of the tree. You see we got a little bit of chromatic aberration. I'm not going to mess with that right now though, but I'm going to put my sharpness up to like 70. Yeah, that's much better. You can already tell the difference. And uh, it makes it just look like it's it's more properly focused. It's kind of cheating, but, you know, I'm not doing a whole lot. So I'm not stressing over it. So now, I'm going to warm up the picture just a little bit to see how it looks. One of the advantages of taking raw photos is it's, it really makes it better for uh, editing. I mean, that's really the only reason why you would. And that looks okay where it is. So I'm going to come in here to my clarity. I'm going to bump this up. Whenever I do any sort of like landscapey photos at all, I bump my clarity up a bit. And um, I noticed that bumping the clarity up does take away a little bit of the colors. So I'm going to take my saturation. I'm going to bump it up just a tad. And then I'm, I'm going to mess with the vibrance. There's not a whole lot that that's going to do. I mean, it's going to pull some of the blues back in the sky, but I'm probably going to do that later anyway. Okay, let's let's reset the saturation. We'll bump the vibrance up. Let's see 
see what we can get there. Let's put that all the way up. I really like the blue down here in the water. Now let's bump the saturation down until we get what we want. Alright, I can handle that. I mean, it's still a little bit too saturated. Let's come back to this contrast. Maybe bump it back down just a tad. Uh, no, I really don't want to sacrifice that contrast. That just makes it more clear. Hmm. Maybe we can mess with the con the clarity a bit. Now, I do really like the clarity. Hmm. Let's just reset all of it right for now, and then we'll bump the violence up just a bit. I'm not gonna go as far as I did a minute ago, but I do like the the way it's doing to the greens. So right now, I know that I do want this sky up here to be blue, so I'm going to go get myself a brush. And I'm going to put that back down to where it was, and then give myself a pretty decent uh, exposure drop. Just so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to decrease my brush size. And I'm just going to paint. And um, Wonders of Lightroom is it actually masks for you and doesn't get over into the trees and stuff. So that's that's always really nice. Um I, it looks like I might have gotten lucky and picked the right exposure setting first try. I'm gonna just paint all this up here, all this sky. Try to stay off that building as much as I can. Now I'm gonna come back up here to the exposure and I'm gonna put it just a bit. Put my contrast up. That's more what I want, not so much the exposure. And I might bring my highlights down. If I can do a whole lot, it's just going to make those clouds look a little bit fluffier. Bring my clarity up some. Okay. Now I'm going to hit, hit. Oh, wait, no, 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 not done. New. That's what I want. New is going to create a new brush and let you make a completely different brush other than this one up here. Now I'm going to come down here to my, my blues in this water, and I'm just going to try to avoid all the green and. Like the the, uh, the reflection of the trees, and just get the reflection of the sky and the building. I'm just gonna get all that selected. <clears throat> now I'm going to bring that up a bit. I'm going for here is to bring some of the blues back, so I'm gonna bump this exposure down just a bit, and I'm bring my contrast up. See, saturation is probably what I want here. Yeah, that's nice. A little bit, it looks a little too teal. I'm gonna hit done. Alright, that that was pretty good. Alright, now let's uh let's move down our our little bar over here. First let's get rid of this. We don't really need that right this second. <clears throat> and this as well. I'm gonna come to this HSL colored black and white and uh I don't really like the color of these trees so much. So I'm gonna just click this and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna select myself a nice neutral green color. And it's going to give me a yellow, so I'm going to bump this down to orange, more towards the orange color. And it's going to make it look a lot more folly. You don't want to go too much, but just enough to make a little bit of a noticeable difference. Not too much that it looks unrealistic, though. Now, I'm going to come up here to the blue, and I'm going to move this a little bit more towards the, the teal side. Not too much. Just kind of change the time of day on myself there. All right, now I'm going to get out of the hue, and I'm going to come down to saturation. And I'm going to make the uh, sky pop a little bit more by taking some of the color out of the trees. So I'm just going to desaturate that a little bit. Just it looks, makes it look a little bit more realistic. And I'm going to try to bump this up some, see how that looks. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay, it's looking very HDR-ish right now. Um, luminance, not a whole lot I'm going to have to deal with here. Um, I'm pretty happy with everything. I might might mess with the green a bit, just see what I can do. I'm actually okay with darkening that just a little bit. That was good. I like that a lot. Alright, I'm gonna come back here and close that. Come back down to my detail and like I said earlier I got some chromatic aberration right there. You I look in the detail. But then I'm gonna come to lens correction, manual, and um Right here in my lens vignetting, in my landscape photos, I always like to do the lens vignette rather than the post crop vignette. So I'll just play with it, see if I can find anything good with it. But it doesn't look like that's going to do anything desirable. I, I might actually be okay with doing a little bit of a white vignette there. 
I actually like that a lot. I'm gonna put that about 30. Um, now I'm gonna go to color and remove chromatic aberration. So click on that and uh, get, get this zoom back in. <clears throat> All right, you see it kind of makes this weird little halo effect. So I'm gonna come in here to my green hue and I'm gonna push this like all the way up and give it a second. Alright, I mean it's helping a little bit. Um see if I just disable that. Yeah. And it makes a big difference. It just makes it look more sharper, I guess, and no one's ever gonna be looking in this close. I'll bump this up to see how that does. That's gonna mess more with this building right here. But yeah, that looks good right there. Okay, let's look at profile and I'll enable the profile corrections to see what it'll give me. Oh yeah, I have to select Canon. I don't know why that's really going to do a whole lot. Shots like this, it doesn't make that big of a difference. I, uh, it's kind of trippy to look at. I, I'm going to keep it off, though. might look a little bit off to people in the video, but trust me, it's for the best. Now I'll come play with the post-crop vignette just to see if there's anything. I want to try to like cancel back some of that white I left. That's going to be a no, so... Okay, um, I noticed that I'm not super happy with the the uh, composition yet, so I'm gonna do do this. Hmm, I can't really seem to get it quite happy with it. I mean, that's the downsides of not starting out with that great of a photo. All right, that'll work. All right, so let's look at a before and after. It's gonna be a pretty big difference. And um, see, we took this photo right here where the sky is all blown out and it's just not very colorful, really low contrast. And we turned it into this really beautiful HDR almost photo right here with some really nice pic or colors in the trees and this great reflection in the water and this little reflecting pool here, the fountain. So if you enjoyed this and you want to learn some more about Lightroom, maybe some uh, After Effects and Premiere later on down the road, make sure to subscribe to Broad Tip. Thanks for watching.